I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home and I hope you'll have a beautiful weekend ahead. Uh, I've spoken about this before, but today I want to talk about it again. And I like talking about certain things over and over again, especially when they're effective, when they're giving results, when people's lives are changing, thousands and thousands of people all across the world. I don't need to prove it to you because it's all there, all over social media, all the time. So it's very important that we keep reviewing the lifestyle changes that we make that are extremely effective. Lifestyle changes are effective for all of us. All the lifestyle changes that we do, they don't have to suit everyone because everyone's different, everyone's unique. Some of the lifestyle changes that I adopt, okay, may give me certain results and the ones that you have may be different for someone else. So I don't have a magic diet to sell you, I don't have a pill to sell you, I don't have a vaccination to sell you. I have a concept to discuss with you over and over again until you can make it part of your life. Now, uh, what I'm talking about today is when we're stuck with our health, Okay, we're stuck with diseases, whatever it is. Take your medicines, do what you need to do. But we need to understand one thing. If the environment is not right for us, okay, we cannot bring about healing. Okay, in all aspects of our life. Let's say, for example, if your work environment is not good for you, okay, it's going to impact your health. It's going to impact your emotional health, your mental health, because you're working in a toxic environment. If that toxic environment changes, guess what? You may be a better employee, your skills are recognized, you may be able to perform better, your health gets better, your productivity gets better. So the environment that is created or the culture in a company can determine the productivity. That's one example. Two, you're baking a cake or you're baking cookies. You put it in the oven. Okay, if the oven isn't set at the right temperature, okay, your cookies don't bake, your cake doesn't rise, you need the right environment. You may have the best ingredients gluten-free, organic sugar, whatever, the best ingredients. But if the environment is wrong, your cookies won't bake, your cake won't bake. And likewise with health. A lot of us today, there are many people, maybe watching this right now, who are struck down with cancer and deadly diseases and they've given up, they've tried every diet plan possible, they've tried every doctor and medicine possible. I'm not here to say that what I'm giving you may solve your problem, but I am here to tell you that there may be something that you haven't yet explored your environment. How do you change that environment around you? So for example, anyone living in a toxic environment with toxic people at home or stuck in a toxic relationship or a kid growing up with fighting happening all around them in their house, the parents fighting, abusing one another, they can't evolve. They will grow, but they cannot evolve the right way. They won't be brought up the right way. Sick people in a toxic environment will not heal. Let's say you have the best doctors and the best nutritionists in a hospital, okay? The best of the best, you bring a patient and put them in the hospital, but the environment of the hospital is unhygienic. Okay, will the patient heal? Absolutely not. It now becomes a threat to the patient. So my whole point is sometimes we gotta step back. We're doing so much. We're chasing diets, we're chasing nutrition, superfoods, gyms, exercise, all of these gadgets to, that we think will make our life better. But what is the environment that we live within? I'm not talking about pollution, all of that stuff we already know. What I'm talking about is our circadian rhythm and our laws of nature. You see, all of us operate within the laws of nature. Now, look, think, think of several laws of nature that already exist, that have never changed. We have advancements in technology, medicine, all of that stuff, but an apple will still fall down. The law of gravity still holds strong. No matter how advanced the world has been, certain principles and certain fundamentals and laws never change. And those laws apply to our body. We live within certain laws of nature. If we abuse those laws of nature, we deal with the consequences. What are some of those consequences? Disease, illness, pain, depression, loss of jobs, unhappiness, all of these things. These are consequences. When we align and live within the laws of nature, all of these things have the potential to slowly disappear. We operate within circadian rhythms, light and dark, sunlight, moon, darkness, light, all of that controls and works with a biological clock in the hypothalamus region of our brain, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, okay? So right now, if I put you in a dark cave, you will eventually lose track of time, your digestion will change, everything will change. If I take your clock away, you wake up today morning and I take away your phone, your clock, everything that can tell you the time, you have no access to time in the day, there will be chaos in your day, absolute chaos. Everything works according to time, according to a clock, according to a rhythm. When we disrupt the time, the rhythm, all of these things, we have chaos. 
Now think about trillions of cells in the human body, all functioning and working with a rhythm. Your breath works with a rhythm, according to a clock. So does your digestion, your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels. Everything works according to a clock. You have this main clock and then you have millions of clocks in your body. They're all working in harmony with each other. If the clocks stop working in harmony with each other, we have discomfort, we have pain, digestion is slowed down, something else changes in your body, your neurotransmitters. So how do we align with harmony? And that's what happens with most of us, with disease, stuck in toxic jobs. Sometimes we have to only change the relationship. So now what if I took a patient or I took a person or whatever, and we manage to put them in the right environment, which means they start living within the laws of nature. Okay, you don't have to become a caveman for that. You don't have to become a yogi for that and leave everything and go and live in a mountain. No, you can do it right now at home. I'm gonna list out eight or nine points that you can do. We've done it before, but I'm gonna repeat it again. I'm sure one of my well-wishers is gonna make a note of that so you can refer to it in the thread of this video. Number one, we follow the circadian rhythm, okay? Probably humans are the only species who abuse it. You'll never find nocturnal birds flying around at daytime, never. Okay, but you'll find all human beings break every single circadian rhythm and every law, and that's why we have discomfort. So now you may be at a point in your life where you're stuck, there's nothing else, to, you know, you've given up, don't give up. Try to follow what I'm telling you. Do it for a week. You are guaranteed to feel some change. Am I saying your cancer is gonna disappear? I don't know. Can we hope for it? Maybe. I'm not here to make any false claims, but when you put yourself in that right environment, guess what's gonna heal you? Guess which intelligence is gonna kick in? Your own system. The only thing that we compromise all the time because we think we're over smart, we know too much, so we try to bring all the external solutions into our body, when the solution is always internal, dependent on the external environment. So number one, for the next seven days, just try it for seven days, okay, as I speak, keep speaking to you, all your little excuses will come up and your obstacles and if you can't do it, I can't solve those problems for you. If you wanna make a change, where there's a will, there's a way, you will figure it out. So number one, early dinners. If you can't eat at sunset, try to eat at least within one hour after sunset. Dinner, as early as possible, with sunset or one hour after that, okay? Then you have time right up till you sleep. Your phone goes off one hour before bedtime, okay? Why? Because that artificial light suppresses melatonin. If you have less melatonin, you have other hormonal imbalances that affect every other aspect of your body, from your immune system to your growth repair and everything else. So your phones go off one hour before bedtime, okay? Now over the next seven days while you do this, while you align yourselves with the rhythm of nature and the circadian rhythm, fix your bedtime. Whether it's 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, try to sleep before midnight. Fix your bedtime and sleep every single day at that same time. Get into bed at the same time every day, okay? If you can't sleep, you need ways to sleep. We've done videos on how you can improve your sleep. So I'll recap the whole thing at the end. So your phones are off. You have one hour before bedtime in that time. Read, make love, whatever it is you wanna do. Prepare for the next day, meditate, listen to music, whatever it is, okay? Go to sleep at the same time. Try to wake up with sunrise or before sunrise, not after sunrise. Try to do this, try to make this work. If you're sleeping on time, it'll automatically happen. When you wake up, do not switch your phones on for at least two hours. The moment you wake up, you finish your toilet routine and everything else, I want you to step out if it's safe for you, you have a balcony terrace or whatever and stuff like that, or open your windows and connect with natural light. You can't see the sun, that's fine, but connect with natural light. You gotta reset your circadian rhythm. This has everything to do with your melatonin that will be produced 12 hours later. So reset, don't look at your phone straight away. You can't do two hours, do one hour, but eventually you can make it a habit. The couple of thousands of people that I told you have done this, a lot of them are very, very busy people, very busy, but they can do it, you can do it. Where there's a will, there's a way, okay? So you do that. Now. What you would have noticed is because you had an early dinner, by the time you wake up and sunrise, you would have finished 12 hours of automatic, beautiful fasting. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, go on for 13 or 14 hours. It's not a competition. Listen to your body. Most of your calories should be consumed morning and by lunchtime. Most, that's the time your metabolism is the highest and you're designed to break down food. So if you have breakfast, get a lot of your calories and don't force yourself to eat. If it's gonna be a mid-morning, time that you break your fast, fine. Your lunch is your meal, which is gonna be the biggest meal in the day. Biggest and smartest, okay? Because you're using your own metabolism, okay? So you break your fast. 
Try to add this as well. If you love coffee, there's no problem with coffee. But at least two to three hours after you wake up, wake up, that should be the time you have your first coffee. Because when you wake up, your cortisol levels are already high. They are already high. Okay, so you don't need coffee at that point. You want to add in the coffee maybe two hours to three hours after you wake up. See, these are things for you to try. You can't do it, you can't do it. Simple, no need to whine, no need to complain. Just don't do it or practice until you get it right. Okay, so a lot of people think they're addicted to coffee. They can't start their day without coffee. In fact, that's a bad sign for you. That means you're sleep deprived, you're fatigued, and you're, you rely on a stimulant to get you through your day. You're going to have bigger problems later because you have to have natural energy to get you through your day. So you finish your either your breakfast, mid-morning snack, and a heavy lunch. Post lunchtime, that's the time you actually start tapering down your calories. Okay, so by the time you reach 6.30 or 7, depending on the country you live or the time the sun sets, your dinner becomes the lightest meal of the day. But don't, don't make it light because I'm saying, if you're hungry, eat a proper meal because you're giving your digestive system a 12 hour to 13 to 14 hour break after that. So you don't have to cut out carbs, all of that stuff. Do whatever suits you, but have a proper meal since you're eating early and so that you don't get hungry at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock and you start snacking, okay? Now, the next point is keep your dinner time the same, keep your lunch time the same. Okay, your body works with rhythm. You can't con keep confusing it every single day. Everything works according to a clock. For this, for, so for the next seven days, your dinner time's fixed, your lunch time's fixed, and the time that you break your fast, try to keep that fixed with a variable of maybe one hour. Try to also fix your exercise time. If you're a morning person and you exercise in the morning, get it done. If you're an evening person, do it. Doesn't matter. Don't, do, don't keep your workouts too close to bedtime because a lot of people can't sleep after that. So fix your time. The same way you schedule your work, your day, your appointments, schedule your life, your health within the laws of nature. Try doing this. Try doing this for seven days. And I can guarantee you, if there's not a massive change, there is some change. Now, yes, you may think that, oh, Luke, but I want to socialize. I want to do that. Fine. Do it six out of seven days. Do it five out of seven days. Take your weekend, sleep late, do what you want. But get five out of seven days right. Put yourself into the right environment, which is your circadian rhythm. When you live within the circadian rhythm, the intelligence of your body is harnessed. It is used. You don't have to try to use it. It's used. And that is the beauty of living and respecting the laws of nature, which work with the circadian rhythm. If you can do this, try it no matter what. Try it. You're stuck at a weight plateau, can't fed up of punishing your body with more diets and exercise. Maybe you just got to start living within the laws of nature and let your body's intelligence handle what you cannot handle. So try this out. Try these simple points. You fail on day one, that's fine. You have day two and day three, day four. You sit down, your mind's going to throw you a hundred different excuses and obstacles, okay? They are your excuses and your obstacles. If you want to really do this, you'll figure a way around it. You'll finally figure out a way. Like I said, where there's a will, there's a way. For everyone else who's just going to sit and complain and find fault with it, they remain stuck in life with the same results, the same average results, no change, absolutely none. If you want change in your life, you've got to do things differently. It's as simple as that. Have a great weekend, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.